modified this compass motor somewhat. You can see under here the 3D printed disc with the flange on it is on top now. And I've used a piece of craft wood. And let me see if I can get that into focus. And these rubber wheels that I ordered uh, from Amazon. Um, what they have, I want to try and show you this. They have a, uh, a D-shaped opening that will fit around the motor shaft. So I have the um, piece of wood here, the craft wood disc, and under there is with double-sided tape is the wheel, one of these wheels, and um, that goes on the motor. And then on top, you have the flange with the disc and that spacer under there, I don't know if you could see that well, that spacer holds the top disc to the upper axle, which is connected to a swivel. So you can see that turns. So when the motor turns the magnets, now these are the magnets, these are one inch diameter and 52 by one inch long. There are three of them, there are three, Three of them on each side, two of them on each side, I'm sorry, two of them on each side. And uh, this is the north end. So the north end is sort of facing the camera. And the motor is going to turn this way, clockwise looking down. And the electric N20 motor is going to turn counterclockwise and make the magnets turn counterclockwise. So the magnets are going to keep pointing north because they're a compass. That's what magnets are. And these are very powerful magnets. So they apply a, a considerable amount of torque. It's not great, but it's enough to make the motor spin pr pretty fast. So I've gotten the motor to go up to 390 RPM. Now what happens is the magnets are turned by the electric motor in here, the N20 electric motor. It's a 1000 RPM N20 electric motor and it's run by batteries and electronics underneath. And when the magnets turn, they actually, because they point north, they stay still and the rest of the armature turns. So that's the concept here. So this would be applicable to say something in the water or something in space where you need to turn without pushing against anything. So that's the concept. So let me show you this in action. And also, it, it's run by a 9-volt battery. Uh, here's the 9-volt battery. It's an energizer. And um, the N20 motor is rated at 6 volts. And I have a MOSFET driving the N20 motor with an Arduino. Um, it has some LDRs on it. These uh, these red red things here, these red um, these red shrink wraps are over LDRs, light dependent resistors. They're not used, but they happen to be on the electronic board, so I left it. And it has. Let's see if you could see over here. There's, there's the MOSFET, and here, you can see right here, is the IR receiver. So I'm using a remote control, like from a TV set, 
to control the speed so I can accelerate the motor gradually. Now what's going to happen, let me see if I can get this back on the mount. Okay, so let me get that, so let me get that a little closer. And you're looking at the motor and I'm going to turn a switch that's going to start up the motor that's going to power up the Arduino in the motor and then I'm going to use this remote control to start the motor turning now the motor does not have enough torque to turn at a slow speed So you can see the motor is turning now, but it's out of phase. Let's get it going. So I'm going to give it a little spin to get the motor turning in, in phase. So the magnets keep pointing north. All right, this is not so simple. All right, we have it going in phase, and hopefully if everything holds together, we'll get it up to full speed. So you can hear it going faster and faster. And I'm turning it up by about five notches on the pulse width modulation, PWM, for the N20 motor through the MOSFET and the Arduino at a time. So it turns like five points at a time. So I've turned it up like about maybe six or seven times so far. And I'm going to keep turning that up. It starts at around like 40. And the maximum is 255. So we're never going to get to 255, but we can get pretty fast. Now you see now with that, with the, um, the threaded part, the threaded extension from the spacer coming down into the flange, that acts like a bearing for this, uh, the magnets and the discs that hold the magnets. So they run very smoothly now. But it's still a little shake. As you see, it's starting to shake. As it goes faster and faster, it's going to shake more. Now, I'm not sure what's making it shake. I think it might be that the bottom is not balanced right. The bottom disc and the positioning of the uh, battery and the electronics and the motor and all, the weight is not evenly distributed. So when it goes faster, it goes out of balance a little bit. But I've given it some tweaks. I try to balance it a little better. And you can see it's going pretty fast. And you can see how it starts to wobble. Now its maximum speed will be attained when the north end of the magnets, the red tape on the magnets indicates the north end. So when that's pointing approximately west, that's when it's going as fast as it can possibly go. And any more, any faster than that, the friction on the bearing is going to be too much and the magnets are going to go out of phase.
So you can see when it accelerates, the magnets will turn west and then they'll come back north. Because the motor accelerates, it turns the armature faster and then as they come north, it slows it down a little. So that I think is about as fast as it can go. Yeah. So let me try one more time. So I'm not sure if it's going to get up to its top speed of 390 RPM, but I did try to balance it a little better, so it should go a little faster. And the way I'm measuring the RPM is I'm uh, chopping off a five second segment from the video and then running it in slow motion and counting the number of turns and multiplying that by 12. So you can see it slows down and goes faster because of the wobble. The wobble really slows it down sometimes. And then when it reacts and balances out and goes faster, it goes too fast. So all I'm hoping to demonstrate with this, well, it's a cool motor, you know, and the Arduino is a robot. And, but what I'm really trying to demonstrate is how powerful Earth's magnetic field is and its ability to make something turn, to make a magnet turn to align with it, like a compass. It's, a, it's thousands of times more powerful to make something, to make a compass turn, to make a magnet turn, than it is to attract. So this would never work if the magnets were just attracting the, the South Pole to the North Pole and so forth. But, but because they're turning to a line, it's many thousands of times more powerful. And you have to consider the Earth's ambient field is only, I think it's like 50 microteslas, but that's the ambient field. We're a thousand miles away, at least, from the magnet itself at the center of the Earth, or wherever the magnet is in the Earth. So if you stripped away the rest of the Earth and just left that magnet there, that would be a very, very powerful magnet.
So whether or not spinning a magnet can produce uh, produce linear motion, propulsion, or thrust per se, that's debatable. I don't really see how it could, but what I think happens is that the north end, because I'm uh, in the northern hemisphere, the north end is attracted more to Earth's north pole, magnetic north pole. So that's what I think is happening there. And um, also, it's, it's a known fact that permanent magnets are stronger at attracting than they are at repelling. There's a slight difference of like 2 or 3%. And this is known by measurement. So your physics teacher is not going to teach you this in college. So let's try and get this to go too fast. I think the battery's wearing out a little. So that's probably as fast as we're going to get it to go. And maybe that's it's reached its limit. As fast as the, uh, the motor is capable of turning it without load. I don't think that's near its record speed. But anyway, that's what I want to show. So thanks for watching. Give me a like and a subscribe and a rumble and stay tuned.